Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman and in this video, section 2, we're going to learn about what's called ketoenol tautomerization. Okay, and this is a very important step in the direction of learning about reactions. So we're learning about alpha reactions, remember that, but we're kind of building up the story. So this is a very important video, just like the first one was, right? We learned a lot about alpha acidity and the reasons for it. Now we're going to learn about this tautomerization process. And it's important that you get this down now. Number one, it's important for this exam. But number two, it's also important for chapter 19. So these kind of, by getting this foundation now, it's going to make your life easier as you learn 18 and 19. Okay, so let's get started. Now the first thing, as you can see here, there's several different variations, a base and an acid pathway to get to this process known as tautomerization. And then we'll talk about some other details after that. All right, so let's get started by talking about the base condition. Now, the first thing I want to emphasize is that the base is the most reactive method to tautomerize. All right, so tautomerize, and obviously we have to talk about what that means right now, but I just want to point this out that base is very reactive. So it's very reactive this way to go through tautomerization. I think I should spell it a little bit better. Torto tautomerization, or tautomerize, it's fine. Tautomerize, tautomerization, we'll talk about what that means right now. But using base is the best way. So remember how like we talked in chapter 16 and 17, you could have acid pathway or, or acid catalyst and base promoted. Well, you can have base catalyst and acid catalyst in this as well, okay? And so not promoted, but base catalyst, just like acid. So now, before I do that, let's talk about tautomerize. What is tautomerization? Tautomerization is the movement of a pi bond and an H or an atom. That's what tautomerization means. So when you tautomerize, it's actually H. Let me just write that there. And H. Because the, there's a few different tautomerizations, but they all have that requirement. So that's tautomerization. So for example, if I have a double bond O, ketone, and it becomes this right here, notice how I move the double bond from here to there, and I move an H, right? An H was here, and now it's right there. So that's tautomerization. And it doesn't have to be a ketoenol. This is called a keto for carbonyl, and this is called an enol, alkene alcohol, enol. So, but there's other types. You could have like an amine go through this, or an imine, but we didn't talk about imines yet, so I'm not going to bother. This is one example of tautomerization, but you can have many tautomerizations. You can have atoms like sulfurs and nitrogens and all these things. As long as you're moving a double bond or a pi bond and an H, it's tautomerization, if that's the only difference. Okay? So it turns out that this process is something that you can go forward and back between. So a keto can become an enol, and an enol can go back to become a keto. And this process is what we're going to learn. That's called tautomerization. So these two are tautomers of each other. Tautomers. Okay? So these are tautomers. Remember how like you have enantiomers, diastereomers, right? And that's the kind of mirror image stuff. Well, now we have tautomers, things that are different between a pi and a H. That's it, if that's the only thing that makes them different. Okay, so let's talk about this base condition. Let's talk about how this works. So imagine if we have a ketone. Now, and I want to emphasize that we use a ketone as an example but this could be all the things that we discuss an ester, it could be an acehalide, it could be even an aldehyde, it could be um, an amide that has no H's on the nitrogen. So anything that we discussed in the previous video kind of applies here as well. It could be a nitro group. So the idea is kind of universal. But here's our template. So here's our template. Now the template under base conditions, meaning we have a base and some solution of water. See, everything's in water, right? So we're talking about things in water. That's what we're referring to for this whole chapter. So if it's in water or related, like alcohol, right, then it could be with a base or an acid environment. If it's in a base environment, it's going to catalyze this reaction. And the way it works is we're going to pull off the H, just like I showed you in the previous video. We're going to make an alpha anion. 
And now, once we make the alpha anion, this can go through its resonance that I showed you. So this goes through resonance, but it becomes something that we have a name for. So this goes here like that, right, through resonance, and this goes up. This right here is called an enol, like an alcohol with an alkene on it, eight, because it's negative, enolate. Well, it turns out that the enolate can then, with water, become protonated up on top by the oxygen to become OH. So this is called an enol. Enol. Okay? So an enolate becomes an enol. All we're doing is protonating this oxygen by using the H here. Okay? I'm just not going to show the arrow to save, uh, you know, make the drawing nice and neat. Maybe I'll do it. Okay. So this right here gets protonated and you get to that. So this is tautomerization. This is the process. This is called base catalyzed tautomerization. See that? That's what this is right here. Now, why is it base? Because at the why is it catalyzed? Because at the end, you're back to hydroxide. You see that? So we start it as a hydroxide. We pull off an alpha H. We go through resonance, and then we protonate, and that's how we get here. But remember, this is completely reversible, completely reversible. And we'll talk more about that in the next video. Not so much now. Okay. Well, a little bit now actually. Okay. But this is completely reversible. Um, Okay, there you go. Okay, so there you have it, right? So this is base catalyzed tautomerization. Now there's a few things to note here. This doesn't happen in any appreciable amount, okay? It's not like because I'm showing this to you on paper that this is going to happen frequently because it really doesn't. Let me show you why. So this is something to keep in mind. So if we have a ketone, it's pKa is around 25, right? Now aldehydes are a little bit less, but pK of ketone is 25. Now hydroxide, when it reacts with this, it initially becomes an uh, alpha anion, right? Plus water. Now when you think about this, and I can show this to you as an alpha anion, or I could show it to you as an enolate, right? Same thing, because they're one and the same. They're just resonance, right? What's the pK of a water? It's 16, right? So this is really more likely to go back. It's not likely to go forward. But it does happen sometimes, right? The idea is that this will deprotonate. Sometimes it'll lose an H and it'll become an alpha anion. But as soon as it does, if you make water, waters are going to protonate it. But because of resonance, sometimes the water will protonate this version instead of this version. It'll protonate the O. And so you'll get an enol even if you start with pure ketone. Okay, so you will go forward and get some enol out of this like I showed you up here. Now, it's really not that fast in the beginning because think about it. If you have pure, let's say you started from scratch, which is really hard to do in real life. But imagine you had just all ketone. So after a while, like this hydroxide comes in, like we talked about in chapter 16. It goes in, this opens up, becomes a hydrate, then it goes back down, becomes a ketone, goes in, becomes a hydrate, goes back down. Every once in a while, it pulls off an H, and you get to this alpha anion. But once you do that, and then you start to make enol, all of a sudden, you have this equilibrium shift. There starts to appear enol, and the system tries to make more of it. Right? So we start to shift and then you start to get more and more of it. So it might not happen very frequently to begin, but once you start to make it, it starts to create momentum for itself and you get more and more of it. Okay? That's what's happening here. All right? But just realize that the pK, really, this is not very acidic, right? This is, water is more acidic than the alpha carbon. So it's not happening very frequently, but eventually it starts to pick up momentum. All right, that's it. That covers this point here for the base pathway. And it's important that you see this pathway. But remember, it's not really happening in a very large amount to begin. Okay? All right. So, but that's not what we're concerned about. All right, now let's talk about the acid conditions. Now, this is even less likely to happen than even base. Okay, but let's talk about what would happen. So, if we have acid, H plus, in water, then, of course, with all acid, like chapter 16 and 17, you protonate the O and you make it positive. But what can happen, and again, we're not talking about how much this happens, because probably not a lot, but it'll build a little momentum as you go. What could happen is that the water 
over here the conjugate acid uh, the conjugate base of of H3O plus. <music>